Okay, folks, so today, unfortunately, we had a new threat that resurfaced and pretty much tanked an otherwise green day. We started with fairly green pastures and then all of a sudden, the stock market gets beat down like a winter gnome in the summertime. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about what exactly happened, how big of a threat this is, and which stocks are going to be the most impacted by it. You may have noticed that a lot of the small cap stocks for once weren't as negatively impacted by this. And all that I ask in return is that you hit that ravishing like button and also don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so by now you probably figured out what I was talking about, but the catalyst for the drop today was Biden proposing that he's going to be doubling basically the long-term capital gains rate for those making over a set amount per year. Now it's important to understand that the stock market has a structure of two different types of money. There's short-term money that moves in and out with the cycles, trying to scalp different market inefficiencies, and then you have the long-term money, the folks that buy and hold for years and years and years, perhaps decades. When you see fluctuations in the stock market, that's oftentimes the short-term money going out and in. Unless there's some sort of black swan event, long-term money tends to not move that often. Unlike short-term money, long-term money isn't very reactive. Now, the reason that it's important to make this distinction is because today, people are worried about what the long-term money is going to do. Biden has proposed a tax that's going to affect people who are holding things for over a year. It doesn't really impact the short-term money, but it definitely has a huge impact on the long-term money. The worry is that they're going to go ahead and cash out in mass, locking in gains at record prices. Now, of course, I want to go ahead and read the proposal really quickly so that you understand what we're talking about. Understand that this isn't Fox News or the Huffington Post. We're just going to talk about what it says. Under this proposal, if you're making a million dollars or more, you'll be paying a new federal marginal tax rate at 39.6% plus a 3.8% investment tax. This could put the federal capital gains rate as high as 43.4% for wealthy Americans. However, and I am trying to be neutral here, but however, if you live in California or New York and you hit this bracket, you're going to be paying a little bit more than 56% in California and 58% in New York. And of course, the big scare is that wealthy Americans, especially in that 1 million plus tax bracket, are disproportionately represented in the stock market. So a tax on them could see selling pressure that affects everybody else. So how does this impact the market? If you are a long-term investor that makes a couple million bucks a year, you had a really good five years in the stock market, and now you're in like maybe your 60s or 70s, you don't really care about leaving anything to little Jack and Susie and your grandchildren. They're little brats anyways, and they're probably going to spend it on drugs and partying. And you want to live nicely now? I don't blame you, but you're probably going to want to take your capital gains out right now. Between now and the end of the year might be your last chance to get it out at these tax rates because taxes to some extent are going to go up. So a lot of wealthy investors, they're not stupid. What these wealthy investors are going to be thinking is, hey, I'm going to be retiring in a couple years. Why not just sell out now and not have to have my taxes potentially doubled? And that's a legitimate problem. But I would make the argument that that's not the majority of cases. For the majority of wealthy long-term investors, investing is what made them wealthy in the first place. And they're concerned with two things, capital appreciation, but capital preservation as well. Regardless of whether you sell now or three years from now, you're going to pay taxes on it. The main way to avoid taxes on appreciated assets is to not sell them. I mean, think about it this way. Wealthy investors are stuck between a rock and a hard place. If you're a wealthy investor, you made most of your money likely by investing. Do you sell out, take a lower tax hit now, but still a sizable tax hit? And then what do you do with the money? If you don't need it for retirement, are you just going to keep it in your bank account where it's going to erode because of inflation? If you go and put that money into anything else, like a real estate acquisition or another type of stock or Bitcoin, you're still going to have the same problem if those assets appreciate. And the thing is that most other asset classes are at all-time highs. I mean, today Bitcoin's going down, so maybe you'll get a ability to buy it at a lower cost basis. Unless you have a pressing need for the money in the next five years, which most wealthy people won't unless they're about to hit retirement, then there's very little incentive for you to sell out now because you're gonna take a hit, you didn't want the money anyways, you wanted to keep it invested, and you're gonna miss out on all the extra gains while holding cash that's gonna be eroded over time. Let me tell you, people aren't gonna to wanna to be in cash over the next couple of years. And also keep in mind, again, there's two different participants in the market. There's the long-term folks that just kinda of buy and hold, and then you have the short-term folks that sort of trade off the cycles, whether that be retail, uh, but it's mostly large hedge funds and Wall Street institutions and high-frequency traders. And the more active traders are taking a sizable amount of the market share right now. And those aren't even impacted by the rates, although they're going to definitely play off the cycle so that they can make some money on the downside and then rebuy back up for the upside. A lot of people say like, oh, why don't the wealthy pay any taxes? I want to give you an extreme example. Elon Musk. Elon Musk his net worth jumped about $100 billion in 2020. I think it was more. Let me, let me Google this. I don't want to spread misinformation. Musk has added a whopping, whooping $140 billion to his net worth in 2020. I don't know if this is updated to the new stock price. 
Uh, probably not because this was in December 21st. But let's just say he added $140 billion to his net worth in 2020, right? He didn't have to pay taxes on that $140 billion. Why? Because those are capital gains. But you only pay taxes when you realize them, which means sell them. You have a capital asset and it appreciates. You don't have to pay taxes on it unless you sell it. So obviously somebody like Elon Musk could say, okay, well, most of my money is in capital assets. So I can go ahead and sell some of them before Joe Biden goes and raises the tax. But in doing so, he's still losing some of that value because he's giving up some of that in taxes. If he just keeps it in the stock, if he just keeps it in Tesla stock, he can keep all of it. If he sells it, he's gonna get cash, but a lot of that value is gonna be eroded because he has to pay taxes. By selling, you're giving up some of your power to the government. If you're a real estate investor and you have 50 real estate properties that just doubled in value over the last 10 years, if you decide to sell them, you're gonna have to pay taxes on all of the appreciation. So you've just reduced your overall earning power and you've reduced your investing power moving forward by paying taxes now. So the point is, if you are a long-term holder and you're in that upper bracket, it's very unlikely, unless you're trying to use that money in the next couple of years, that you're going to be selling out in a panic. There's some situations where certain asset classes have gotten really out of hand, where people might want to take some profits, and that you might see some selling pressure in. A lot of people are making the argument that it's better to pay half in taxes than it is to pay double in taxes, and I agree. But it's even better to pay nothing in taxes. And by not selling, they don't have to pay anything in taxes. And by the time they want to realize it in 5, 10, 15 years, they can realize it and there's probably going to be a politician that lowers it back down. And again, this is a legitimate bad catalyst for the stock market. I'm not saying it's not, but it's not catastrophic. The reason that you see these huge reactions is because the short-term money is playing off your emotions. Think about it. Long-term money by nature of being long-term doesn't make rapid decisions or react rapidly to news catalysts or reports the taxes are going to go up. Do you really think that long-term investors didn't know last year or this year that Biden was going to raise taxes? He's been talking about this forever. That's like his whole platform. Wall Street's not stupid. People that are in that bracket aren't stupid. They know, they know he's gonna raise taxes. The whole reason to take today is because it was profitable for short-term money to play off the news cycle. But there is definitely going to be a bad effect when the long-term money actually does want to sell out of some of their asset classes. For one, sectors that are largely composed of long-term investors. And number two, sectors that have really rewarded long-term investors, especially over the last year to five years. Big tech stocks, a lot of the S&P 500, and a lot of the Dow. That's why you saw the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ get almost equally bludgeoned today, while a lot of the small cap stocks that are more actively traded, like in the Russell 2000 or in the ARK funds, those only went down a third of the way. Stocks and sectors that have a lot of long-term investors that feel that they've already met their goals are gonna be the most prone to selling because of this proposal. But you look at some of the small caps, most of them are made of short-term traders. People that get in and out, hedge funds that get in and out, institutions that get in and out. If you look at just the last chart on any high growth play, most of the capital and high growth stocks flowed in and out within the last 12 months. So those aren't long-term investors, that's short-term money talking. And the long-term investors that are in there either came in the last year and don't qualify for long-term term investment gains rates, or they actually were legitimate long-term investments, but those long-term investments haven't realized the gains yet. Let's just say that you went ahead and you bought PLTR in October. Sure, even with all the volatility, you still doubled your money, but that wasn't a 12-month span. So you don't even qualify for long-term capital gains yet. And if you're buying your IPO as a long-term investment, odds are strong that your plan was to hold it for years. So I'm not giving any tips on whether you should be holding high growth stocks for years or not. That's a topic for another video, and some of them do deserve it. But the point is that this catalyst isn't that bad for high growth stocks. It's bad for growth stocks like blue chip growth stocks like Apple, Amazon, and the likes, maybe even Tesla. But it's not as bad for high growth stocks that largely are funded by short-term money or very, very long-term money that hasn't realized their investment objectives yet. Quick update on plays. So skills continue to short squeeze this morning, going all the way up to just under 20 bucks, which was really impressive considering yesterday's 30% rally. When these short squeezes squeeze, they really squeeze folks. Short squeezes don't last forever, but they are indicative of stocks being pushed too low. It looks like we are starting to see some strength again in the after hours with skills, but make sure you're keeping an eye on this. My long-term price target is about 30 bucks, rain or shine. Okay, there were a few NFT plays. TCAT came back today with a 17% rally. Keep in mind though that this is nearly 100% hype, so make sure that you are keeping hype plays short term. You're, these are chart plays, you get in, you get out. Just make sure that you don't overstay your welcome. Okay, our cybersecurity play, CrowdStrike is holding strong three percent nothing to brag about but it does provide some stability in a crazy time i would say if you want to get into this play make sure you're getting it at a dip but in terms of one of the best imminent deals right now i would probably say charge point 
Charge Point is trading near March lows. It's the main charging station player, and it's also about to benefit huge from the upcoming Biden infrastructure bill that heavily prioritizes EVs and EV infrastructure, of which they need damn charging stations. You got to charge those suckers up. But anyways, folks, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below or join us on Zip Trader Circle. If you'd like some free stocks when you deposit with Webull, they are an excellent broker for new traders. So check them out if you are broker curious. We accept everybody at Zip Trader, broker curious or not but if you are broker curious you might as well pique that curiosity by going and checking out Weeble. Anyways folks that caps off the video and I'll see you in the next one.